Once upon a time, a king was hunting in the great woods. When evening came on, he stood still and looked around him, and he saw that he had become quite lost. He sought a way out, but could find none. Then he saw an old woman with a shaking head coming toward him. He didn't know she was a witch. Good woman, he said to her, can you not show me the way out of the woods? Oh, certainly, Sir King, she replied. I can quite well do that but on one condition, which you must fulfill, or you will never get out of the woods, and will die of hunger. What is the condition? asked the king. I have a daughter, said the old woman, who is so beautiful that she has not her equal in the world, and she is well fitted to be your wife. If you will make her lady queen, I will show you the way out of the woods. In his anguish of mind, the king consented, and the old woman led him to her little house where her daughter was sitting by the fire. She received the king as if she were expecting him, and he saw that she was certainly very beautiful. But she did not please him, and he could not look at her without a secret feeling of horror. As soon as he had lifted the maiden onto his horse, the old woman showed him the way back to the palace. The king and his maiden arrived there safely, and soon the wedding was celebrated. The king had already been married once, and he had by his first wife seven children six boys and one girl, whom he loved more than anything in the world, and now, because he was afraid that their new stepmother might not treat them well and might do them harm, he put them in a lonely castle that stood in the middle of the woods. It lay so hidden that the way to it was so hard to find that he himself could not have found it out had not a wise woman given him a reel of thread that possessed a marvelous property. When he threw it before him, it unwound itself and showed him the way. But the king went so often to his dear children that the new queen was offended by his absence. She grew curious and wanted to know what he had to do quite alone in the woods. She gave his servants a great deal of money, and they betrayed the secret to her and also told her of the real that could point the way. She did not rest till finally one day she found out where the king had been guarding the real. Then she made some little white shirts and, as she learned from her witch mother, sewed an enchantment into each of them. When the king had ridden off, 
she took the little sharks and went into the woods, and the wheel showed her the way. The children, who saw someone coming in the distance, thought it was their dear father coming to them, and they sprang to meet him very joyfully. Then the queen threw over each child a little shirt. When the shirts touched their bodies, the children were changed into swans, and they flew away over the forest. The queen went home quite satisfied, thinking she had gotten rid of her stepchildren. But the maiden had not run to meet the queen with her brothers, and neither the queen nor the sister knew of one another. The next day, the king came to visit the children, but he found no one but the maiden. Where are your brothers? asked the king. Alas, dear father, she answered. They have gone away and left me all alone. And she told him that, Looking out of her little windows, she had seen her brothers flying over the woods in the shape of swans, and she showed him the feathers that she had collected, which they had let fall in the yard. The king mourned, but he did not think that the queen had done the wicked deed. He was afraid to leave the maiden all alone in the woods. He wanted to take her back home with him, but she was afraid of the stepmother, and she begged the king to let her stay just one more night in the castle in the woods. And the king had left his daughter, the poor maiden thought. My home is no longer here. I will go and seek my brothers. And when night came, she fled away into the forest. She ran all through the night and the next day till she could go no farther because of weariness. Then she saw a little hut, went in, and found a room with six little beds. She was afraid to lie down on one, so she crept under it lying on the hard floor. She was going to spend the night there. But when the sun had set, she heard a noise and saw six swans flying in through the window. They stood on the floor and blew at one another, blowing all their feathers off. Then each of their swan skins came off like a shirt. The maiden recognized her brothers, and she crept out from under the bed overjoyed. Her brothers were not any less delighted to see their little sister again, but their joy did not last long. You cannot stay here, they said to her. This is a den of robbers. If they were to come here and find you, they would kill you. Can you not protect me? asked the little sister. No, they answered. For we can only lay our side or swan skins for a quarter of an hour every evening. Only at this time do we regain our human forms and then we are changed into swans again. The little sister cried and said, Is there not some way that I can free you? Oh no, they said, the conditions are too hard. You must not speak or laugh for six years and must make in that time six shirts for us out of star flowers. 
if a single word comes out your mouth, all your labor is in vain. And when the brothers said this, the quarter of an hour came to an end, and they flew away out of the window as swans. But the maiden had determined to free her brothers, even if it should cost her her life. She left the hut, went into the forest, climbed a tree, and spent the night there. The next morning she went out, collected star flowers, and began to sew. She spoke to no one, and she had no wish to laugh, so she sat there looking only at her work. she had lived there some time. It happened that the king of another country was hunting in the forest, and his hunters came to the tree on which the maiden sat. They called to her and said, Who are you? But she gave no answer. Come down to us, they said. We will do you no harm. But she shook her head silently. The huntsmen would not leave her alone. They climbed the tree, lifted the maiden down, and led her to the king. The king asked, Who are you? What are you doing up that tree? But she answered nothing. He asked her in all the languages he knew, but she remained as mute as a fish. She was so beautiful, however, the king's heart was touched, and he was seized with great love for her. He wrapped her up in his cloak, placed her before him on his horse, and brought her to his castle. There he had her dressed in rich clothes, and her beauty shone out as bright as day. But still not a word would be drawn from her. He set her at a table by his side, and her modest ways and behavior pleased him so much that he said, I will marry this maiden and none other in the world. After some time, he married her, but the king had a wicked mother who was displeased with the marriage, and she said wicked things of the young queen. Who knows who this girl is, she said. She cannot speak and is not worthy of a king. After a year, when the queen had her first child, the old mother took him away from her. Then the old mother went to the king and said that the queen had killed the child. He would not believe it and would not allow any harm to be done to the queen. So she sat quietly, sewing at the shirts, and troubling herself about nothing. The next time she had a child, the wicked mother did the same thing, but again the king could not make up his mind to believe his mother. He said, she is too sweet and good to do such a thing as that. If she were not mute and could defend herself, her innocence would be proven. But when a third child was taken away, and the queen was again accused and could not utter a word in her own defense, the king was obliged to give her over to the law, which decreed that she must be burned to death. 
when the day came on which the sentence was to be executed. It was the last day of the six years in which the queen must not speak or laugh, and by doing so, she had finally freed her dear brothers from the power of the enchantment. The six shirts were almost done. All that remained to be sewn on was the left sleeve of the last shirt. When she was led to the stake, she laid the shirts on her arm, and as she stood on the pile, when the fire was about to be lit, she looked around and saw six swans flying through the air. Then she knew that her release was at hand, and her heart danced for joy. The swans fluttered around her and hovered low so that she could throw the shirts over them. When they touched them, the swan skins fell off, and her brothers stood before her, alive and well. Only the youngest had a swan's wing instead of his left arm, because his sister had not had enough time to finish his shirt. They embraced and kissed each other, and the queen went to the king, who was standing by in great astonishment, and said to him, Dearest husband, now I can speak and tell you openly that I am innocent and have been falsely accused. She told him of the old woman's deceit and how she had taken the three children away and hidden them. Then they were brought back to the court, to the great joy of the king, and the wicked mother was banished from the country. But the king and queen, with her six brothers, lived many years in happiness and peace.